in the last stream we were working on revamping our ore processing system by incorporating the laser io mod with these laser nodes and their associated item and energy cards to not only power all of these machines simultaneously using all of our lapidary dynamos which are now up here in windmill crescent but it also allowed us to move all of our items around to all of the pulverizers and induction smelters automatically allowing us to filter everything directly to where it needs to go speaking of which i did make one mistake right at the end of the last episode and that one mistake is why we currently have so much sapphire ruby and peridot ore backed up in this diamond chest and that is because what i did is i tried to send all of the sapphire ruby and peridot to the pulverizer side of this island when in reality the sapphire ruby and peridot actually needs to go to the induction smelters and so i fixed it now over here i just changed the whitelist i got rid of the uh, ruby peridot and sapphire ore from uh, this extractor card and i moved it over to this extractor card and so now things are slowly but surely being processed one other thing we can do that is probably going to make our lives a little bit easier and make our system just a little bit more efficient is we can get at least one node overclocker here the node overclockers work in a similar way to the card overclockers the card overclockers allow cards to work faster the node overclocker allows the node to do more stuff at once without the node overclocker this node kind of switches between these two cards periodically so it'll do some extracting for this card then it'll do some extracting for this card then it'll go back to doing some extracting for this card if you have the node overclocker in it it basically allows the node to use more cards simultaneously which means now it should be able to do the extracting for both of these cards at the same time without having to compromise on speed for either of them which is ideal that's kind of what we want to be happening and so now that that's taken care of the plan for today's stream is going to be to start work on the ultimate tech quest line we of course already have uh, emeralds and tech books and did we get any tier 8 support for him we did not i will go ahead and make some just because i know we're going to need it and also because it does complete that quest line for us good stuff and i do wonder the next two ores that we're going to be getting are osmium ore i'll bookmark that and uranium ore i'll bookmark that as well do these require tier 8 support frame? They do indeed, yeah. So we're going to need a fair amount of that tier 8 support frame before the end of the episode. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make at least, let's say, 36. That's going to get us the first frame. And then, annoyingly, the way that I've set this up, we're probably going to have to get another 36 because we're going to put uranium here and then we're going to put osmium all the way over in the corner over here where cobblestone used to be not that it's a massive problem i think at this point in time we've got six thousand emeralds and so we can make really as many of these frames as we like we could make close to twenty thousand of them if we uh, wanted to and so you know 70 isn't going to be uh, a problem whatsoever before we do get started though on the mechanism quest line uh, one small thing that i would like to do in fact actually i am going to get started on the mechanism quest line first because what we need to do here is unlock osmium or and then once we have osmium or we can then unlock mechanism and so we do need to get a couple of osmium ingots before we can get started with mechanism and so i'll come back to what i was about to do once we have osmium up and running so in order to get the osmium or unlocked we have to complete the osmium research paper which is four blocks of emerald one two three four along with the standard elite technium and research papers we need one more elite technium and again i've got to get used to using uh, this thing right here to more quickly teleport between our two locations boom and boom let's go ahead and hand that in and now we know the gist at this point we go back to oz our us we disable the diamonds we disable silver i think everything else is already disabled we enable osmium did i just enable diamonds and silver i might have done let's disable those and then let's get some colored stone along with our good old prospectors pickaxe and let's see if we can't get 36 osmium ore it really shouldn't take that much colored stone to get that much osmium ore because you get so many fragments from every single piece of colored stone perfect we'll do this and this we'll then do this and this i'll make as much of it as we can and then what we'll do is we'll take 36 and we'll use that of course to build out our infrastructure 
we'll put one of them in the filter over here, like we'll add to this filter so that all the osmium that comes in gets processed by the induction smelter, which is, I assume, where it needs to go. Never mind, it looks like we actually cannot just put the osmium in the induction smelter. Interesting. What we can do is we can put it in the pulverizer, and then we can put the dust into the induction smelter. I don't know if that's an oversight or if that's intentional. Um, I was under the impression it might be the case that we'd probably have to use mechanism for it, like after the jumbo smelter. But that is interesting. Okay, that's fine. For now, let's go ahead and put, I guess then, in that case, uh, some of this uh, spare osmium that we have into these pulverizers here. And then while those are pulverizing down, let's go and throw down all of this osmium ore over here just as soon as we swap out some of these support frames here for tier 8 support frames. And not too long later, we now have our osmium ore being produced up in here. We will, of course, lock that drawer. And we've kind of got to decide now what we want to do here because we could, if we wanted to, we could just add the osmium to the filter that sends it over to the pulverizer so we could pulverize all of our osmium ore but that's just going to fill our system with osmium ore and not necessarily with osmium ingots speaking of osmium ingots let me quickly get another storage drawer over here we'll put that down right about there and i will lock that to make sure it doesn't fill up with anything other than osmium we've got a lot of osmium dust which is great and if we want to smelt this we can use the jumbo furnace, but the induction smelter is still the best option. We could potentially have all of our osmium pulverized and then send it back to this chest potentially to be sent to the induction smelter side. But that becomes a little janky because then we have to run like an export cable uh, from Simple Storage Networks up to this chest, which is not really an ideal situation. One thing we might be able to do, actually though, is we might be able to do some like overly complex setup here can I blacklist? I can. I can blacklist osmium dust on the importer here. So right now we've got a filtered import cable and it's currently set to ignore list. And so if I put this in here, it doesn't get pulled in. It pulls in everything apart from the osmium dust. And so we can probably utilize laser IO to our advantage. What we can do is right now we have this set to extract on the white channel. If we make another item card, and we also set that to extract on the white channel. Of course, that went straight into my card reader. Extract, white channel, and round robin true. What we should be able to then do is put that in the bottom here. But if we filter it with another one of these filters, we can basically tell this node to extract osmium dust from this chest. So if we do this and this, now, if we put that extraction card into the down section here, that should pull any osmium dust out of this chest. And of course, we will change that to uh, ideally pull eight at a time. That's going to pull the osmium dust out of there and send it around to the induction smelters. That is very cool. I really like the way that the laser IO system works there. The fact that all of these are connected and the fact that we have all the different channels means that now what we can do is we can just tell our system to send all of the osmium round to the pulverizer. So up in here, we're going to uh, up, we're going to the purple card, and we're going to say osmium goes over to the pulverizers. Then it's going to send the osmium over. The osmium is going to get turned into osmium dust. The osmium dust gets sent to this chest via this uh, item card right here with the uh, insert. And then this extract card acts the same as this extract card here and pulls that osmium dust out of this chest and sends it round into any free induction smelter to be smelted into osmium ingots that then get pulled in to the system and should eventually get placed into the correct drawer that is assuming that i actually set up the drawer correctly nice as per usual i would love to get a drawer upgrade into there just to give us even more space so we're not overflowing on osmium anytime soon and the final piece of the puzzle here of course is just to grab one of these extracting conveyors throw that down right about here and then rotate that to phase inwards i could kind of do with <laughs> covering all of these belts with steel scaffolding like we did on the lower platform because every time i fly up now i end up picking up just way too much ore that i don't want to be carrying around with me and so we should definitely look into that at some point in the not so distant future but um honestly that is all we need in order to get four blocks of osmium and those four blocks of osmium should be everything to unlock mechanism here of course uh, we do need to get get more elite technium we should probably just go ahead and connect this draw up our other draws are already 
connected up. And so real quick, let me find where my simple storage network cable is. And then if we just get another one of our filtered link cable, and of course, some more of our network cable, we should be able to do a quick one of these. And of course, I guess actually one of these is gonna be less cable there, just a little bit more efficient. And then we can just fill the hole in and uh, reload the textures to make them look right. And at that point now, if we try and shift click the recipe in, our system does have access to that Elite Technium. What we don't have is paper. So we can make more paper. We keep making it using the, um, the leaves, but it's probably worth taking a second to maybe just get another garden cloche. We have here the uh, industrial hemp fiber, which, you know, is coming in. It's very helpful. But uh, if we just get another garden cloche here and potentially place it down, maybe like right next to the pre-existing one, we could then set up a garden cloche for sugarcane as well, making it much easier for us to get paper in the future without having to go through the rigmarole of crafting, you know, leaves into cactus, cactus into uh, bamboo, bamboo into bay leaves, bay leaves into you know, some coriander, then coriander into, into uh, sugar can. Anyway, so let's quickly see if we can't make another garden cloche. I think we should have basically everything. We do indeed. If we throw that down right here, we then can just throw down an extra fluiduct next to our pre-existing fluiduct. Like that. That's going to send the water over into this garden cloche. For now, we are still using the uh, LV wire connectors over here, which is actually completely fine. So we'll do this and we'll do this. Thankfully, these don't require much power at all. And then from there, if we just take some of our pre-existing sugarcane, which of course we don't have, that would be far too easy. So hopefully for the last time here, let's do uh, cactus, let's do kelp, let's do bamboo into sugarcane, perfect. So we'll put that in here. We do also need, I believe, some sand if we want that to work effectively. Uh, dirt might also work actually, but that's now going to grow sugarcane, and then of course, as per usual, all we need to do is throw a framed drawer on the front here with some smooth stone, and of course, some dark oak. Nice, and we'll throw that down right about here, and then the ideal situation here is going to be that we connect this up using a filtered link cable, right, so that we don't have to continually come back over here whenever we need sugarcane. For that, we just need one more dropper, not a problem, and then we'll just throw that down for now, here and here, and then ideally, we'll run some cable down, and we shouldn't be too far away from our pre-existing network cable. I think there is one under this platform. There is indeed, and so let's just do a quick one of those. And now we have access to sugarcane up to 2048 of it as this drawer fills up, and we do have uh, almost four hours in our time in a bottle here, so if I were to do something like this, I think we should start to see sugarcane coming in somewhat quickly. We do, look at that, nice, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. Not super fast, considering this is going 64 times its regular speed, but then we do have a power problem here, which is to be expected, actually. If I put some uh, speed into that, we might see it coming in a little bit faster. Not that it really matters for the most part. The, the problem there is also probably that the uh, wire cannot transfer that much power either, so we might have wasted a bit of time there. But anyway, we have this coming in, and just like with this draw, because it's running passively in the background all of the time, it's just gonna keep making more and more sugarcane for us. And in the future, whenever we need sugarcane, we can just uh, grab it out of the system, craft it into paper, and then of course craft that paper into blank research paper, which we can then use to unlock mechanism. Nice. Boom. And I'll take the free tech books. In fact, I'll take all of the tech books from that entire quest line. Good stuff. And cool, we now have access to all of the recipes from Mechanism. But before we do that, I do want to quickly jump back to what I was about to do before we started making the Osmium Ore, and that is that I would like to invest in a couple of Feral Flare Lanterns to allow us to light up our base a little bit more evenly and to get rid of all of these torches that are kind of currently uh, just dotted around the base. Like right now, this bottom level is very dark. I would like to fix that using these Feral Flare Lanterns. These are super cool because the way they work is you place them down and then they will then independently place down a bunch of extra invisible lights around the base that do emit light. Also, it seems like we are fully out of basic technium, which is not ideal. We might have some over here. We do, which is, is good to see. We have some backed up, but we are not making it fast enough. It looks like the problem is clay, surprisingly. Do we not have clay being made down here? We do. I guess it's just not particularly fast because there's currently no capstones. That is fine. Real quick side tangent. Let me do something 
like this and get four more ruby blocks to allow us to get our clay just that little bit faster and prevent it from being the bottleneck on basic technium. But uh, back up here, these feral flare lanterns will place down invisible lights around the base that then emit light and, uh, and allow you to light up your base without having to place just a staggering number of torches everywhere. And so if, for example, we put one down right here under this platform, it is then going to start placing light spots down around the base. This would be easier to see during the night, but you can kind of see here that we're losing some of those shadow spots because little bits of light are being placed down. Um, I'll also put one down, ideally like right here, so we can start placing uh, light sources down above as well. They do place light sources both above and below, by the way. You don't just have to place them below your platforms. You can place them wherever you like. I like to place them below the platform because then you can't really see them and you get the full effect of them lighting up the platform without having to have, you know, the lamps actually visible, which I think is um, is ideal. But uh, yeah, we'll probably distribute more of those around the platform as we go. And in fact, I'll make at least one or two more of these here for our windmill crescent platform up here. Let's put one down, let's say right about here, and then we'll put one more down, potentially up on the top, maybe right about, whoops, here. Gotta make sure we don't touch those wires, they do still electrocute us. Also, it turns out, I'm not quite sure why, but um, whenever you put a waystone down, there must be some integration between the waystone mods and the journey map mod, because if we press J, we actually have these waypoints from journey map. I'm gonna go ahead and turn them off, because I don't think we necessarily need them. All of our waystones are not that far apart from each other that I need like beacons to show me where they are. But uh, if you're interested, it's uh, J on the keyboard, you go to waypoints and then you can toggle them on and off. Also, if you want, you can click edit and then uh, you know change the color of the waypoint and that will change the color of the text and the beam coming out of the sky if you are into those uh, waypoints being there. Anyway, now that we have that taken care of, let's finally start looking at mechanism. So the first quest here wants us to get a metallurgy confuser and some steel casing. Usually, the metallurgic infuser doesn't require any steel casing, and the same is true here. It just needs two iron furnaces, four iron, and some osmium. Surprisingly, we are still not getting enough iron. That is interesting. So, there's two things we can do here. The first is that we could upgrade the capstone. Right now, I think signalum is still the best we can get, although emerald might actually be a good capstone now that i think about it it's actually not it's it's okay but it's not um not as good as signalum signalum is um is 40 ticks netherite is 20 ticks so is uh Enderium, but i don't know if we can get either of those just yet so we could upgrade to signalum the other thing that we could do also beacons are very good but we need nether stars for those and we don't currently have a way of getting these i don't think so we could upgrade the capstones for a small improvement but another thing that we could potentially do is we could actually start sending our iron to the pulverizer just like we're doing with the osmium because right now the iron is getting put into the induction smelter and we get one iron ore per iron ingot however if we pulverize first we get two iron dust per iron ore and then from there we can then smelt that iron dust in the induction smelter in just the same way we're doing with the osmium and that's going to effectively double up our iron production and so let's take iron off of that list and let's move it over to this list that's going to start sending the iron over to here the twitch chat has pointed out that currently when you pulverize osmium you do have a chance of getting copper dust as a byproduct and so you'll see right here that uh, every time we pulverize osmium we are, we are getting some copper dust and that copper dust is currently being sent to the system what we want to do is we want to add copper dust to the ignore list so the copper dust doesn't get extracted and then from there we want to once again add copper dust to the white list on this extract card so that it gets pulled around and smelted into copper ingots we also want to do the same thing then with a nickel dust nickel dust is the same as copper dust but it's made when you pulverize iron ore it's a byproduct that you get 10 percent of the time so once again let's uh, blacklist the nickel dust and then let's add it to the white list here to allow it to get smelted back into nickel ingots and we also need to do the same actually with iron dust as well right now the iron dust is just going into the system we need to add it to the ignore list and then up here we need to uh send it around to the induction smelters but by doing that we should now have effectively doubled the amount of iron that we get per iron ore which is great and on top of that just to squeeze out that tiny bit more efficiency Let's see if we don't have enough signalum here, which we definitely do, to make four signalum blocks. And then 
over here will replace those uh, ruby blocks, which um, annoyingly do take a little bit of time to break here, even with a diamond pickaxe. And that's going to eke out just a tiny bit of extra performance for us. Back over here, we can try again for that metallurgic infuser. And if we want to make steel casing, which is the core of most mechanism machines, for this we need steel ingots, we need glass, and we need elite technium ingots. That might be okay. We seem to be light on steel, which is to be expected because we're also kind of light on iron. Do we have any steel over here? The steel is being made into, uh, into steel gears, and the idea is that it should back up eventually, but um, obviously right now it's not backing up, and uh, steel gears are the thing that's kind of bottlenecking us. We could potentially look at setting up more blast furnaces. We could also potentially look at doing something like this with the, uh, the iron and the coal cook as well. Uh, but also, I do believe that now that we have the metallurgic infuser, we should have unlocked potentially a different way of making steel, although I don't see it in here, so it's quite possible that... Uh, oh, no, we do. Right here, we can use uh, coal or charcoal with enriched iron to make steel dust, and then we can smelt that steel dust into steel. Enriched iron is just iron and coal again. And so this setup here kind of cuts out the need for coal cook, which has been kind of the bottleneck up until now because the blast furnace here is slower than the induction smelter, but it uses less coal cook. And uh, if we want to use the induction smelter, it's faster than the blast furnace, but requires a lot of coal cook, which then just changes the problem because the coal oven is also quite slow. So we could definitely look at uh, changing up the way we do things here. It's really actually not too difficult. If I were to go and put this metallurgic infuser down, for now I'm gonna put it here, even though it's extremely awkward. Um, I do wanna set up some new platforms potentially over here. And of course we do wanna get rid of that main platform at some point very soon and replace that with a nicer looking one. But uh, essentially what we can do is we can place coal into this slot on the left. In doing so, we're gonna get carbon in this bar. Then we can use that carbon with some iron and use that like this to make enriched iron. Now the machine's not particularly fast, but there are speed upgrades we can make, and we could also use the time in a bottle to make it faster as well. But once we've got the enriched iron, you can then put that back in. And by the way, this used uh, 10 carbon, so it used effectively one coal. We can put it back in. It's gonna use another 10 carbon, AKA another one coal, and it's gonna get us the steel dust that we can then smelt. So there are a few things we can do with that to make it more efficient. One is that we can get an enrichment chamber, but for the enrichment chamber, we are gonna have to get a, uh, a steel casing first. So let's go ahead and do something like this to get at least one steel casing. We can then use that steel casing to make our enrichment chamber, which is this guy here. Uh, this requires four redstone, two iron, the steel casing, and then two basic control circuits. These are made in the same way in the metallurgic infuser with redstone and osmium instead of with the uh, iron and coal. Redstone we have, and osmium we've got a thousand already, which is fantastic. In here, I do want to make use of the carbon, so I will put uh, some iron in there, and I will quickly do one of these to allow us to quickly process kind of all of that. And then from there, we'll put in redstone and osmium, and uh, we'll start processing that down. I did put in way too much redstone there, but in an attempt to capitalize on this uh, 32x speed that we've got, we might as well see if we can't get as many basic control circuits as we can because they are used uh, a substantial amount in mechanism. We're definitely going to need more than, uh, you know, a stack of basic control circuits before the end of the pack. And there is also a quest here for that. There's also a quest for some of these other alloys as well. And I do realize now we've actually used all of the redstone, so uh, we're going to have to do one of these. But uh, if you put in redstone and iron... Oh, never mind. Ben has changed the recipe here. This requires an infused crystalline instead of an iron. Normally it's just an iron ingot here. That is interesting because it means that we need diamonds, emeralds, and crystalline dust. And the crystalline dust is crystalline pulverized, which we get from crystal ore. Interesting. So we do have the ability to get crystal ore. Like we can just buy it, I believe, from Ozara's. We can indeed for 12 tech books. And if we look ahead a little bit at the recipe for advanced, uh, the recipe for ultimate technium, we do need infused crystalline for this as well. So this is required not only to make infused alloy, but it's also required just in the making of ultimate technium. And so we should probably get another induction smelter and just set up a little system that produces unlimited 
infused crystalline kind of over here somewhere because obviously the idea here much like with our previous tiers is that we're going to get a frame draw we're going to get some smooth stone and some dark oak and we're going to have ultimate technium produced and sent around hopefully to here that is the plan for that i think we just need another one of the same tier of crafters we do indeed we need another advanced auto crafting table that should be very easy for us to make do we have what it takes to make uh, two of these we totally do we can then make one of these and then from there if we get uh, four more of these wooden hoppers we can then upgrade to this guy right here the advanced auto crafting table uh, and as per usual we'll just get a normal hopper and place that down right about here with this guy here and then all of the automation for this is hopefully going to go here that's not a lot of space but we might be able to get rid of some of these coke ovens if we do uh, swap out our steel production for something a little bit faster like the new mechanism setup but uh, to make this happen we need to get an induction smelter which should be one of the easier parts of the system here we just need one more machine frame and boom we're done the next part is that we need to get crystal ore and we need to add it to the system. We also need to pulverize the crystal dust twice before we have it go into the system because I don't think that we need crystalline for anything else other than crystal dust. So let's go ahead and grab some more tech books. From there, we can purchase the crystal ore. The tricky part from then is deciding where in the world we're gonna put this because at this point in time, everything here apart from the stone is an ore we do have this slot that slot was kind of being saved for uranium but i guess for now we might as well go ahead and throw down some crystal ore here and then we'll uh, we'll revisit this problem when we have to find a place for uranium it's not really going to be a huge problem because we could use either belts or laser io to just move uranium ore from the bottom of the platform kind of up to this uh, top level here we do also need to replace the uh tier 5 support frames here with tier 6 support frames and of course we are going to need the miner here as well which we currently do not have uh, do we have any crystal ore in the system we probably could have made it actually i'm pretty sure we have uh, yeah crystal fragments i probably didn't need to spend the tech books on buying it but that is fine we've got uh, basically an unlimited amount of tech books at this point and so we'll take the miner we'll throw that down where it needs to go right about there and then we'll go ahead and uh, quickly replace these support frames and once we've got all of this set up with the miner and the extractor all of our crystal ore is making its way around over into here all we need to do now is add crystal ore to the channel 2 whitelist so that's going to pulverize the crystal ore into crystal line we then need to once again blacklist the removal of crystalline because we don't actually want any crystalline the crystalline itself is useless there's nothing we can do with it other than pulverize it again and so what we want to do is this time we want to once again put in another item extraction card but this time we need another purple item extraction card because we need the crystalline to go back into the pulverizer that is fine let's grab an item card you will do if we have gold nuggets uh, hopefully the compacting draw situation should be fixed in the next update of the pack so we should be able to get uh, a compacting draw set up very soon chat but uh, over here extract round robin we're going to set you to purple and uh, once again we're going to grab our last filter upgrade we'll throw that in like so and then we'll throw in the crystalline like that and then now if we put that in here as well that should begin pulling the crystalline out and putting it back into one of our pulverizers nice that gets us the crystalline dust and then from there all we need to do is you guessed it grab a storage draw throw that storage draw down over on the storage wall and make sure that it is allocated to crystalline dust nice and so now that we have that we can take our newly minted induction smelter and over here we can throw it down connect it up to power let's put it like here for now we can uh, connect that up to power which we'll do in just a second and we can also throw down an export cable and tell it to export specifically one diamond uh, i guess two diamonds two emeralds and two crystalline dust do we have what it takes to make some more export cable we totally do so we'll throw that down like this i am going to once again get another stock upgrade and use that to keep a specific amount in just so that we don't end up with uh, the wrong stuff in here and let's make sure the bottom here is set to input like that fantastic we'll set the top to output we'll throw down another storage drawer on there i did just make a bunch more 
of these frame draws, so we're not making them uh, individually every single time we need them. And of course, network cable is going to allow us to connect this export cable to our pre-existing export cable. Fantastic. And then all we need to do from there is just specify that we want to export specifically uh, two diamonds, two emeralds, and two crystalline dust. Let's add that to here. We'll do two, two, and two. And that should start to work just as soon as we craft up yet another flux point, which should be our easiest way now of getting power to new machines. Let's do this and make sure we select a lappy power like so. And in theory, if we set the top to output here, which it is already, and we set the output to auto output, that should automatically begin producing for us the infused crystals that we need not only for the next tier of technium but also in order to make the infused alloys that we need to progress further with mechanism so let's lock that down and then i guess we could also do with a filtered link cable on there as well i think we are fully out of filtered link cables now that's fine we can make oh no we just did make some more never mind i have them <laughs> in my inventory let's put that down here I was going to run through the floor initially, but we do have a cable right here, so I feel like doing something like that is going to make substantially more sense. And we could also do, I guess, with making more integral components. Do we have what it takes to upgrade here? We don't. We're just missing, though, two Signalum gears, which we definitely can make if we quickly hijack this multi-servo press here. We could have also used the metal press, of course, but the uh, multi-servo press here is just that little bit faster. Boom. And then over here, let's do a quick one of these. And then boom. That should now be going just that little bit quicker. I will put a downgrade in there again, just to make sure we don't waste too many materials. Although to be fair, we don't currently have a use or much of a use, I should say, for our diamonds and emeralds. And so even if we did send, you know, 2000 into here, that wouldn't really be the end of the world. And the same is kind of true with the crystalline dust as well. So you know what? That's fine. I'm going to leave it and I'm going to let it gobble up or a good chunk of our emeralds and diamonds. And yeah, that should just kind of get the job done. What we can do now is back over here, we can quickly drop some of that ore back onto the belt and we can grab some of those infused crystals, at least one, and place them in here with the redstone in the metallurgic infuser. And that should get us our very first infused alloy. And boom, nice. So, now that we have that, we are going to need a lot more of those, actually. We need so many, I think, infused alloys to push forward. Has this recipe been tweaked? It hasn't. This recipe is the same. Okay, so what I was going to make back over here is I was going to make an enrichment chamber, which we should now be able to make because we have the basic control circuits. And again, for now, we'll plot that down right about here just to give it some kind of power. This is nifty in that uh, right now, if we want to make steel with mechanism, we have to put in one coal to get one enriched iron and then another coal to get the steel dust. So it takes two coal per steel. However, if we put one coal into the enrichment chamber, that is gonna process the coal into enriched carbon. And that enriched carbon then gives you 80 millibuckets of carbon in the metallurgic infuser, as opposed to the 10 millibuckets of carbon that you normally get from one coal. And so by running the coal through the enrichment chamber first, we essentially get eight times as much carbon. And so instead of requiring two coal to make one steel it now takes one coal to make four steel which is substantially more efficient and now we could put the uh, enriched iron in there we could look at speeding this up speaking of speeding it up there are speed and energy upgrades that we can make these ones here and here that are going to allow us to make the machine faster to make these, we are going to need a fair amount of infused alloy. We're also going to need some osmium dust and some gold dust. But for the most part, that all seems very doable. The infused crystals are coming in nice and quick. I am going to go ahead and drop a bunch of them in here. You can do the same with redstone here, by the way. We could enrich the redstone first in order to get enriched redstone, and that is more efficient in the metallurgic infuser. However, we do have 62,000 redstone, and so I'm not too worried about wasting a little bit in the metallurgic infuser here. Also, if you have stuff in that you want to get rid of, you can just press dump and that will get rid of any carbon or redstone that's locked in there. And then from there, you can just put in what it is you actually want to process. And we can then for now, at least use the time in a bottle to make this substantially faster. And I guess while I wait for this to do its thing, let me go and see if I can't get a couple of pulverized osmium and pulverized gold. Both of those we can get by just taking gold 
and osmium and putting them in pulverizers. In fact, pulverized osmium is, is currently being made for us, I guess, and it's currently being sent around into here, and then we're kind of pulling it out uh, manually. But uh, if we were to just temporarily do something like this, that should get us 32 pulverized gold. And then osmium-wise, I guess I'll try and just steal some from here, because it seems like it's kind of coming in somewhat quick, although I guess I'm not fast enough to steal it out. Eight is actually probably all that we need, and uh, the pulverized gold is going straight into the system, which is uh, is perfect. The reason that I say eight is probably all that we need is that you can only put a maximum of eight speed and energy upgrades into any one given mechanism machine. And so over here, we've got 40 infused alloy. We can do this, and we can make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these upgrades. If you try and make more than eight, it's going to start a new stack. They don't stack in greater amounts than eight. And then the energy upgrades are very useful here because they offset the energy increase uh, or the increase in the amount of power required to run the machine. So right now, if we were to put something in here, like some osmium, this metallurgic infuser uses 20 redstone flux per tick. Not too much. Up in the top right, there's an upgrade slot, and this shows us the upgrades currently installed. There are two ways you can install upgrades. You can put them in manually, like this, and it will go one at a time, um, or you can just shift right-click them onto the machine like this, and it will put them all in at once. So I'm going to uninstall all of the upgrades here. If I put one upgrade in, and we put that same osmium back in. Now it's using 35.56 redstone flux per tick, a very specific amount, but the benefit here is that we can then use an energy upgrade to offset that. So uh, only one energy upgrade is necessary here, but if we put that one energy upgrade in, it's still going to use more power than it was using before, but now it's only using 26.67. So ideally here, what we want to do is we want to put in all of the energy and speed upgrades, like this and like this, and hopefully that's not gonna use too much power. Real quick, without the energy upgrades, how much is this gonna use? 2,000 redstone flux per tick. If we put the energy upgrades in, that comes down to a more reasonable 200 redstone flux per tick. It's still a lot of power, considering we're not making a ton. Uh, we are making 240 per dynamo, though, so we might be okay. And right now, we're not saturating um, our induction smelters or pulverizers. They're not all running at full speed all the time. And so we do still have some power left over here, which is good. And yeah, that's now a much faster machine. We can also do the exact same thing with the enrichment chamber here. We can make this faster. And on top of that, Mechanism also allows you to uh, upgrade your machines to factories. If we type in installer here, we can make these installers that start at the basic tier and move all the way up to the ultimate tier. And these essentially transform your machine from being able to process one item at a time to being able to process three items at a time. And so now in here, if we wanted to make steel, for example, we could take some iron, which is now thankfully coming in faster. We could put that in like so. We can then click the auto sort button to on. That's going to distribute anything that you put in evenly amongst all of the slots. It's going to make sure they're all balanced out quite nicely. And then if we wanted to, we could also get some more carbon from our enrichment chamber. Of course, ideally, we'd want more speed and energy upgrades here. But for now, we can just do something like this. Take the carbon, put it in. And now this is going to use 600 redstone flux per tick because it's using triple what it was doing a second ago because it's doing three things at once now. And it will process all of the iron into enriched iron at the same time. Uh, if you go up to the advanced tier, you get five slots. The elite tier gets you seven slots, and I believe the ultimate tier gets you nine slots. So you can process up to nine resources at a time. And then, of course, we could just take all of this out, put it all back in again, and we have steel dust. And then we can just smelt this into steel ingots, and we're good to go. Speaking of smelting, we do have the option of using the energized smelter from mechanism here which does require another steel casing again thankfully now that we have steel being made all we need to do is smelt it i don't know if i can use an induction smelter for this i totally can fantastic so if i just quickly hijack one of these and do something like that that should start making me more steel and hopefully we can then steal that steel to produce our uh, steel casing good stuff and then from there we can look at making that energized smelter Nice. And the benefit here is that it can also be upgraded. We can put in the installer, like so. And of course, we can uh, move that over to power, let's say right about here, like so. And then we can take the steel dust, we can put that in here, we can turn auto sort on, and it's going to make a horrible sound, but it is going to start smelting all of that steel into steel ingots. And of course, what we would love to do here is get some more osmium dust so we can make some more speed upgrades we've got the gold dust and so we can make more energy upgrades but the energy upgrades are not particularly useful here without the speed upgrades we also by the looks of it need more infused alloy that's fine we've still got more infused crystalline coming in and so once again we can uh, make sure that's empty drop in those guys and then grab some redstone do something like this 
and maybe like this just to make sure we've got enough redstone in there fantastic and then i guess we could kind of do with a pulverizer that's not connected to the network just so we can get some osmium dust so what i might do is i might temporarily disable this throw the osmium in there and then maybe give it a quick tap as well to uh to get some osmium dust more quickly so we can speed all this up and there's a couple of things we can do here uh the first thing we should probably do is take a metallurgic infuser an enrichment chamber and a basic smelting factory and bring them all over here and we should probably just replace the blast furnace because the blast furnace is doing okay but it's real slow and as we saw a second ago it is currently our bottleneck in terms of producing more technium producing more technium is not really necessary at this moment in time but having a bank log of steel in this drawer that we can then use to make more steel casing to help us progress with mechanism more easily is going to be ideal and so i do think it's going to be worth us taking all of this out one more to go fantastic we'll reset that back to input and output uh, add it back to the network and then over here let's see if we can't make a couple more speed and energy upgrades so i would like at least maybe 16 of these so that's eight and then another eight we should be able to just shift click that oh, never mind i was hoping that uh, if i shift clicked it, it would just make one stack but instead it made as many as it could which is not ideal because it used more infused alloy than we needed but uh, actually three stacks is, uh, is probably what we wanted so let's do this and then we'll do the same here we'll make kind of as many of those as we can which right now is a stack and a half we're just missing yet more of these infused crystals again these seem to be our bottleneck they are coming in passively so i'm not too worried but if we uh, if we get to a point where we don't have enough at all we could definitely look at uh, upgrading the speed of that induction smelter over there just to make it a, a tiny bit faster but uh, let's take these let's do at least four more for this and then let's do another eight to get us to the same number of energy upgrades from there let's go and let's tear down the blast furnace it's sad to see it go because i do like the way the blast furnace looks we're gonna kind of just replace it with some uh, some bog standard machines but i think it is the best course of action it also means we have to uh whoops speed up this <laughs> slag draw get, we have to get rid of the slag draw not speed it up and then uh, over here let's take our infusing factory let's take our enrichment chamber and let's take our smelting factory so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put the uh, smelting factory down right here we're gonna put that down and we're gonna have that eject into this drawer so that all of the steel that is smelted goes into the drawer now before that we kind of need to get two infusing factories because whilst we could potentially get away with one i think the system is going to be better if we have two if we have one making the enriched iron and then one making the steel uh, thankfully the metallurgic infuser is one of the easier machines to make and of course we do still have what it takes to make another installer not that we necessarily need the installer i think the machine is probably fast enough on its own and uh, with the installer we might start to tear through our iron a little bit faster than i'd like we could also just look at adding another iron miner though, right? That could be another solution to our current iron problem. Either way, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And then I'm gonna put the enrichment chamber down. Maybe like, ooh, where do I wanna put this? I'll probably end up using laser IO actually to move the, uh, the enriched carbon around because we want to distribute the enriched carbon between the two metallurgic infusers. And so if we use a laser node, we can utilize the round robin function to evenly distribute the enriched carbon amongst our two basic infusing factories here. And so what we'll do is we'll place down maybe like this guy here and maybe the enrichment chamber here. Although, actually, it would probably make a lot more sense for us to move. So right now we can push directly from this infusing factory into this guy but if we're going to try and distribute it's probably better if we do this this and this so here we want to do a few things we want to get our export cable which i might have put back in the system i did and we want to export coal directly to this basic infusing factory much like the machines from thermal expansion uh, in here we can go to the side configuration tab and uh, if we uh, shift left click we can turn these to uh, disabled uh, we want to make sure the left side here is set to red. There we go. So I want to export iron to the metallurgic infuser like this. And that should put iron in these slots. We'll go to an auto sort on. We want to export coal to the enrichment chamber. So let's put this here. Let's do one of 
these, and then let's have you export coal down into the top. We'll then set the bottom to blue, so output, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get some more item cards to distribute the coal between these two here. Now, one slight problem that we are going to run into, actually, is we can't have... I was going to use the node here as well to move the enriched iron over to here to be turned into steel dust, but we can't set the right-hand side here to yellow and to output at the same time. And so we might actually need to get a, a second node here to make this work as intended. That's fine. We can get one more laser connector and ideally one more node, although we are once again running out of iron. I think that's because all of our iron was sent over into here. It was. We're going to have even more iron buffered up in there now because of the fact that it has three slots in it. So you know what? Let me actually move this again. We're going to get rid of you. Get rid of you. We're going to move this back to here so we're going to have this take the iron it's going to export it directly what we can then do is we can potentially just have like an enrichment chamber here with two laser nodes here and here for distributing the uh, the stuff that needs to be distributed so let me get rid of this exporter which is going to move it over by one to here uh, we can also do this here we'll then place you down here and we'll get rid of this guy here and here perfect so once again you are going to input from the left now not from the top and you are going to input coal perfect and then you're going to output to the right hand side so blue not the bottom over here you're going to input from the left which is still perfect and you're going to receive the enriched carbon from the back so we want to set the yellow to the back we want to set the right hand side to output we want to turn auto eject on that means that once it's made the enriched iron it's going to auto eject it to the output which in this case is on the right we then want to make sure that this guy is set to input from the left so it can receive that auto ejected enriched iron then it's going to output to the right again auto eject on ideally you're going to input from the left and again output to the right with auto eject on and you are also going to receive yellow from the bank which is the uh, carbon form here so now we just need to get i believe three item cards but almost certainly yes not going to have enough uh, gold nuggets for that let me make a few more stacks of those we do have twelve thousand gold so i'm not too worried and three once we have three item cards we want one of these here set to extract from the enrichment chamber so that's going to extract from this side right here so we're going to put it in the north side like that we're going to set it to extract and round robin true and transfer amount we can leave that at one that's fine then the other two cards are going to be set to insert which they are and those are going to go in here and here on the west side and that should now start to distribute evenly the carbon just as soon as we dump the excess redstone out of that smelting factory and of course as soon as we get some power into the enrichment chamber so now that that is done we just need to get power into these machines so we could make multiple flux points for this but i think one flux point should do the trick we do appear to be out of eyes of ender and for that we're out of ender pearls we do have some ender pearl fragments here are we not automatically processing these do we just have ender ore sitting around somewhere we do it's not being processed that's probably fine for now because we would need some kind of auto crafting table setup to make it work we should definitely look at getting that set up sooner rather than later so we don't have to keep manually making these but uh, for the time being let me get an uh, eye of ender going here and uh, let's get another flux point and then we've kind of got a choice as to how we want to proceed with this because we could either run some leadstone flux ducts from the flux point to all of the machines which might just be the easiest solution we could also use laser io as well if we wanted to to move the power around but i think it is going to be a simpler setup if we just take some more flux ducts uh, these used to be called leadstone flux ducts by the way in all the versions of uh, thermal expansion and we can just do something like this and this and that should begin sending power to these machines fantastic uh, we do need to link the laser nodes that is true i need to do this and this fantastic that should now start distributing the carbon and then what we want to do is get our speed and energy upgrades into all of these machines so one of these already has them it's this one uh, you over here do not boom and boom and you over here also do not so boom and boom are you full up now oh you are but you need energy upgrades that is fine nice okay so this now is doing pretty well we want auto sort to be on which it is and 
yeah, we're now producing steel, hopefully, substantially faster than we were a second ago. And you'll see we are doing it because we're now backing up inside of this multi-server press, which is good. The only thing that's limiting us is iron. We don't have enough iron coming in. Even though we're now doubling the amount of iron that we're getting because we are processing it twice, we do have 192 iron. Is the problem the speed at which the exporter is capable of exporting iron? Or is there another problem? There is a slight problem in that I didn't set the uh, cable to export iron. That's like a small, a small little problem that shouldn't cause us too much trouble. Let's uh, try doing something like that. And you're already working, that's fine. Okay, cool. So we could definitely look at adding some more of the speed upgrades from Simple Storage Network to that exporter to allow it to export a little faster. We could also, as of course, look at adding stack upgrades as well if we thought they were necessary, but it looks like one or two speed upgrades is doing the trick here. I do have a sneaking suspicion though that um, I feel like this is not auto-sorting correctly, although it could just be a visual glitch. Um, but I do have a sneaking suspicion that we are going to run out of iron very shortly because we didn't have much to begin with and we are running out fast. And so I think we're going to have to just get another iron miner going, along with our um, uranium miner as well, with both of which are going to go on the lower level here. Uh, uranium shouldn't be too difficult for us to unlock, I don't think. Down here, if we want uranium... We need, oh, we need atomic alloys. So we do need to go a little further into mechanism before we can unlock uranium. But I think we should definitely look at getting more iron miners down. Maybe even two more iron miners because the iron is, uh, is definitely our most in-demand resource. All right, so I've thrown down another iron miner here. And my thought process is that if we do something like this, we can then extract from here like we normally would. But then... Obviously, we need to get these up, and that's where these vertical conveyor belts come into play. We made some of these earlier in the series because they were required to complete the quest. But if we come up like this and go across like this, we can kind of add ores from the lower tier of the base to the higher tier ore processing system. Obviously, this is not necessary. We could have used laser IO to much more easily and efficiently uh, kind of transfer this stuff around, but I kind of think this is going to look cooler so i don't actually know if i rotate that to face sideways does it connect up nicely it does beautiful okay cool we need to rotate these like this and now that iron ore should make its way out up around and then onto the top level and my plan is to kind of duplicate this same setup on the other side it looks a little bit janky <laughs> but it does work that's just a visual glitch they do actually make their way up in the end and yeah i'm thinking of doing the same thing uh, whoops not like that uh, over on this side to bring up any other ores that we want to bring up as well and also of course just to add uh, symmetry to the whole setup where possible uh, i want to get rid of that one there ideally and yeah i think this is going to work quite nicely we've kind of doubled up now on iron ore so now twice as much iron ore or almost twice as much iron ore is being sent in it's obviously not quite twice as much iron ore because we don't currently have the uh, four signalum caps on top of that but if we do add those four signal and camps we should now be producing double the amount of iron and effectively what we've done is we've taken it from one iron ore every 40 ticks down to one iron ore every 20 ticks so we've doubled the amount of iron we're now making one iron ore every single second and that iron ore is then being processed in our pulverizers and then smelted in our induction smelter speaking of which people have pointed out that somewhat annoyingly the steel dust is supposed to be smelted in the induction smelter or at least it's more efficient i should say if we uh, smelt our steel dust in the induction smelter so ideally if we could make one more induction smelter here we can then do something like this get rid of the basic smelting factory which is annoying because the basic smelting factory is a lot faster than the induction smelter but the reason why it wasn't splitting in the way i thought it would split like when i was trying to use the auto sort function the reason that wasn't working is that if you use the smelting factory, you need to use two steel dust to make one steel ingot, whereas if you use the induction smelter, one steel dust equals one steel ingot. And so although it's not as fast, it is twice as efficient. And of course we can make it quite fast if we just throw in some integral components and some augments. So integral component wise, we're just missing again, two signalum gears. We have hundreds of signalum. And so I'm gonna go quickly make some more 
signal and gears up in here. And then once we've got those, we could also look at making some more flux linkage amplifiers. For that, we're just missing some lead gears and some electrum plates. Lead-wise, we can just swap the lead for the signalum. And then in terms of the electrum plates, we do have three of them already, although we could probably do with more than three. But we'll keep an eye on this and we'll see how fast it goes. Can I make at least one flux linkage amplifier? I totally can. And then if we want to make another one, we are going to have to go and uh, play around with the metal press because currently we don't have a multi-servo press that is capable of just making plates. We could take the gear working die out of here, but that seems like more effort than it's worth. You know what, real quick, let me grab some of our electro ingots and let me go make some electro plates just so we can make that induction smelter as fast as possible. And a few more electron plates later, we have some more flux linkage amplifiers and we can try and make this as fast as it can possibly get. And that seems to be working quite nicely. We've got steel banked up in here, we've got steel banked up in here, and now the steel is gonna start backing up in here. We're gonna have four stacks of steel that all bank up. And it does look like iron is still the limiting factor, but hopefully that's okay. We could put down even more iron miners, like they're not particularly difficult to make, but my hope here is that uh, we could use some of these spare ones actually over here to make this a bit faster. But um, my hope here is that we're backing up on steel now. We should slowly but surely back up on steel. And then once we back up on steel fully, we should then start to, um, to back up on iron as well. So hopefully this all works out quite nicely. Back over in the mechanism quest line though, let's claim that quest real quick. We should be able to work through this fairly easily. The advanced control circuit is something that we can make right away it's just one basic control circuit and two infused alloys that is easy enough and that should be a quest complete there we go took a second that's fine and then from there the pank wants us to make a reinforced alloy and then eventually an atomic alloy so the reinforced alloy is going to require another metallurgic infuser again not a problem we just need two more standard minecraft furnaces which we can definitely make and we need four iron which is definitely the hardest most rare resource known to mankind but we do manage to, uh, to squeak out a little bit every now and again. Let's put that down back over here. And this time around, if we want to make the elite alloy, we need to take the previous tier, infused alloy, which we do have, and we need to infuse it with diamonds. Now, this time around, you can't just put the diamonds directly in. You do have to enrich the diamonds first. And so we are going to need yet another enrichment chamber. Uh, that does require yet another steel casing, but we are now backing up on steel, and so we should be able to make really as many of those as we like. As per usual, the only thing we do not have is iron, but we might just be able to steal a little bit from this infusing factory every now and again. And once we've stolen a bit of iron, we can do this, get our enrichment chamber, and replace that down like that. Okay, cool. So now we can use our diamonds to get enriched diamond. And once we have enriched diamond, I'll make a few of those, we can then do this and this to get the elite alloy. And I will make a few of these because I think we might need a couple of the atomic alloys before the, uh, the episode is through. And so now the final tier of alloy is that atomic alloy. But to get it, we do first have to get another machine, that being the osmium compressor. So the osmium compressor is fairly straightforward to make we need another steel casing i'll make a few of these just so we have them ready to go let's say eight for the time being and then we need two regular minecraft buckets which i'm hoping we have along with two advanced control circuits and four infused alloy so we need another advanced control circuit and we need back some of these infused alloys that is fine the control circuit easy enough the infused alloys we have and boom we've got an osmium compressor which for now we'll put down right about here so this i believe takes osmium in the bottom slot like this and you can then infuse other items and ingots with osmium for example if we want to make refined obsidian ingots we have to infuse refined obsidian dust with osmium in the osmium compressor refined obsidian dust is made in the metallurgic infuser this time with obsidian dust and diamond in the uh, extra slot and then obsidian dust we can just get by running obsidian through the enrichment chamber so up here if we put obsidian in and again give it a quick tap that should get us obsidian dust get forward a time from there we can then place the obsidian dust in here with some of the uh, diamond in the yellow slot and then again if we give this a quick tap we can then speed that up chat is also right in that we can extract the uh, speed and energy upgrades that we put in here earlier because we do no longer need this and so let's uninstall all those and quickly do this and 
this, fantastic. That gets us refined obsidian dust. We can put that in here to get the refined obsidian ingots. Again, a quick tap with the time in a bottle is gonna help tremendously there. And that should complete this quest, which then unlocks the atomic alloy. The atomic alloy doesn't actually require the refined obsidian ingots. I'm not quite sure on the order of the quest here, but this is made with refined obsidian over here, uh, either the dust or the enriched version, and then reinforced alloy. So if we were to put the reinforced alloy back in, we could then take some of our refined obsidian dust, place it in the enrichment chamber. That is then going to enrich it, thus allowing us to get more efficiency out of each refined obsidian dust. Again, we'll give it a quick tap. And then once we have that, we can place it in here, and that is gonna get us four atomic alloys. And by four atomic alloys, I of course mean two atomic alloys. We need, by the looks of it, uh, one more refined obsidian dust through the enrichment chamber and in here. Beautiful. And four is the perfect amount as well, because once we have four, we should now be able to unlock the uranium papers. All we need is a blank research paper, which does require sugarcane, but linking back to the start of the episode, we now have a ton of sugarcane ready to go. And so we can make really as many research papers as we like. And from there, boom, we have uranium unlocked. And so now over here, we're ready to start work on the power quest line by getting some uranium fragments, uranium ore, uranium ingots, and then trying to work our way down to the reactor, which I think is gonna be a good goal for us next episode, because we are probably getting to the point where we're gonna be stretching the limits of our current power setup. We're doing okay currently, like our uh, flux storage here is still full, which means we are still producing more power than we're using, but as we keep adding more and more machines, as we keep making things faster and faster, and uh, as we keep adding more ores as well to the ore processing system, we're getting closer and closer to requiring more power, and having more power is just going to let us speed everything up and expand going forward. One final thing that the Twitch chat does want me to set up here is muffling upgrades. Muffling upgrades are kind of the same as speed and energy upgrades. The only difference is that they muffle. I actually don't know if these stack. I think they do. Yeah, they do. So you can put a few of these into, real quick, let me get some of the uh, infused crystals again. And uh, let's put those back in here with redstone. And you can put up to eight of these into a machine. And the idea here is that they just lower the amount of noise that a given machine makes, which is very useful with mechanism because the machines are incredibly loud. So over here, we have these machines that are kind of whirring away and they are quite loud and uh, have a bit of a, a sound to them. If you put the muffling upgrades in, that reduces the sound substantially. Alternatively though, you can just go to this muffling button inside of our inventory. You can type in mechanism and then you can just click the little mute sound button on all of these. That's gonna mute the sound entirely. And if you want the sound back but quieter, you can then just bring this back a little bit and you can kind of set the volume of that sound, which is nice. You'll also notice we do have the bottling machine squirting its sound away over in the corner here. Uh, if we type in bottling, we can then mute that. And if we bring that down just a little bit, now it should be much quieter. I barely even heard it there in the background. So yeah, you can use this to uh, to substantially reduce the amount of an annoying sound if you don't want to hear it going forward. So yeah, I think next time chat, we'll come back. We will uh, keep an eye on iron production. If iron production dips too much, we'll definitely look at, um, at setting up, you know, a third, fourth, fifth, sixth iron miner. Like there's really no limit to the number of iron miners that we can set up at this point. The Twitch chat has also reminded me that we could also look again at uh, covering up some of these belts just to make sure that we don't end up picking things up, especially uh, these vertical belts over here. If we do, you know, something like this, that's just going to prevent us from uh, walking past here and picking up rogue bits of iron ore, which is highly likely if you ask me. But yeah, I'll keep an eye out on the iron ore. I'll see if we uh, do need more of that. And uh, next time we'll come back, we'll work our way through the power quest line, see if we can't get a better source of power up and running. And then we'll also push forward a little bit onto the ultimate technium ingot, which shouldn't be too bad. We've already got infused crystalline automated. We've made atomic alloys, automating that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, uranium needs to be unlocked, but then getting sheet metal is just the same as what we did for aluminum and lead sheet metal beforehand. And then the only thing we don't currently know how to make is dielectric paste. And that is because to do that, we have to unlock the power research paper, which of course requires some uranium. And so that's what we're gonna work on in the next episode. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Techopolis 2 there.